Watch this thing bury the needle, man. Just wow. <laughs> it's so good. It's so goddamn good. What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Yammy Noob. We have today the Indian Scout Bobber. We had this for a little bit of a showdown video between our Sportster. And I actually picked this bike up on Twisted Road. You can click the link down below. Get yourself a free day of riding. But when I was riding this motorcycle around, the main thing that struck me about this bike is just how good good the engine was. This engine is absolutely incredible. And I think it's worth talking about because it means a lot to A, American motorcycling, B, the cruiser marketplace, and C, it's just so cool. I mean, look at, look at it. I like this blacked out aesthetic with the, you know, uh, chrome nickel silver heads with the relief cuts on it. It's very subtle, it's very pretty, and it just goes like nobody's business. So let's get it out on the road. Let's have a little bit of a chat about it because there is so much to talk about with this bike. Unfortunately, one of the things we don't need to talk about here is the engine note because doesn't sound particularly good with those uh, with those stock pipes. I mean, it sounds fine. It just sounds corked up. Now, what is so unique about this engine? Well, first of all, it's a liquid-cooled cruiser engine, which to the rest of the world might not sound particularly mind-blowing. But from the American cruiser standpoint, liquid cooling's a big deal. And what it's allowed Indian to do is create a motorcycle that goes like no one's business. Here, let me show you. It hauls ass! This motorcycle is so fast, it's unbelievable. It's such a good power plant. I can't believe that it's this good, honestly. Uh, you know, you think American motorcycles, you think really slow, lopey, torquey engines. And this bike does have that below 4,000 RPM. You know, it's just happy to cruise and it's got plenty of torque to just kind of go. But you rev this bike out and it has a completely different personality. This bike hauls when you get it over 5,000 RPM, and it'll just pull all the way to the rev limiter. And it's, the gearing is super long too. Like I've had this bike, you know, go uh, like 80 miles in second gear on the, or 80 miles an hour in second gear on the highway. It's ridiculous. It's, it's so fast. And it's, it's one of those things where it's a sleeper, you know? It doesn't look like a bike that should be as quick as it is. And this is absolutely, positively not a beginner bike whatsoever. Uh, I was considering starting on a Scout 60 back in the day, and uh, you know, there's a whole long story about two points on my credit score that they did not like and they didn't give me the financing that I wanted. And to be honest, I'm kind of glad because even the Scout 60 making like, I don't know, 70 horsepower is a lot. This is like, it's like real bike horsepower. This isn't Harley horsepower. And that's one of the things I want to drive home here is the disparity between these two engines the Harley horsepower, it, you don't feel it at all. You feel the torque. And you rev it out and it, it, you know, it goes pretty well. But once you get to highway speed, to get it to go from like 
60 to 80 takes full throttle and you know I don't know maybe five seconds five or six seconds of full throttle this bike to go from 60 to 80 takes uh, it happens in the blink of an eye this is a really fast cruiser and you know I've had uh, people say oh well you know it's it's not a muscle cruiser because it's not making you know 160 foot pounds of torque like the rocket 3 is but this thing man alive I it's it's every bit a muscle cruiser especially with the shape of this tank it, it's so it's so clear what they want you to do they want you to hit a straight line and just crack the throttle open and leave it pinned and just run it through the gears because the transmission feels great going from gear to gear you know there's a really good positive clunk from you know when you shift through you know whatever gear you're in you go up a gear and it clicks into place really nice but the whole bike doesn't shudder like the Harley does you know it just it feels really good it feels really natural and something we mentioned in the uh, cruiser comparison video between the Sportster and this Indian here, it doesn't actually feel super great in a corner. Eh, whatever, it's a cruiser, right? People don't... You can't say that it's a sport bike. You can't ride it like a sport bike. It just doesn't... It doesn't feel super great running through the corners, you know? But anyway, we're not, we're not here to talk about this bike's performance so much as we are to talk about how the engine feels and what it does for the cruiser marketplace because what Indian have done here if they've they've taken the cruiser platform and made it sporting right they've taken a platform that's meant to just be lazy and they've given this a engine a lazy quality down low so that it's easy to ride through the city and you know easy to lope down the highway if you click it up into sixth gear you'll be at 4,000 rpm this is the kind of engine that really changes a landscape this this thing it, it feels to me almost ducati-esque and that's th those are some bold words you know this this thing vibrates and makes the noise of something like that 90 degree l-twin or v-twin that we have in the uh, in, in the Penegale and this is just a cruiser you know it's just it's completely happy to just chill here and the ergonomics are relaxed which makes this just so so intoxicating to me because you can have really big power and really comfy ergonomics and classic styling right this is a classic looking motorcycle ostensibly because it is even though it's it's really not it's a bike that was brand new in 2013 it just has an old name but this is the kind of engine that harley needs to develop they they absolutely need to go to the drawing board and i've not ridden a motorcycle with the rev x in it yet i don't think many people have but i have ridden a v-rod and the v-rod felt like this this feels like a v-rod but that, you know, just had more to it. It was, it was even faster. But these are the kind of tectonic shifts that you don't see in the American cruiser marketplace that you need to see, that they need to see more of. This is, this is the engine that if Harley could reverse engineer it, this engine would save Harley Davidson 100%. They slap this engine into a Sportster, game over, everyone's gonna buy a Sportster. They won't, and honestly, if they put this in the Sportster, it won't feel, it won't have that same classic quality to it. You know, in this case, classic reads as bad because the Evo, it's not a great engine, really, it's just not. It vibrates too much, it's air-cooled, it doesn't make much power, but it has a lot of potential because people are making, you know, big crazy head kits like we're going to put on our Sportster. But this is just out the door, ready to go, just like this. 
I honestly feel comfortable enough saying that this is the best engine in a cruiser, period, end of story. There are a handful that I haven't ridden, but I can't imagine them feeling as good as this. You know, the, uh, the Diablo, I've spent a little bit of time on a Diablo, and that feels more like a sport bike than a cruiser, really. It feels like a naked bike, a big kind of fat naked bike. I haven't ridden the Rocket 3, but this is smaller, and I like smaller motorcycles. It's just, this is perfectly stable puttering down the highway at 70 miles an hour, but I crack the throttle to wide open, and it's just, it's picking up gas like nobody's business. You know, I can, I can catch anybody on the highway on this. And as much as I love the Sportster platform, and I do love the Sportster platform, I know when to tap out, and this is the motorcycle that, to me, dethrones the Sportster. It doesn't feel like a Sportster at all, and it doesn't have the same classic feeling, because this is a modern motorcycle. This is a brand new motorcycle. The Sportster is an old bike, but this is the engine and the motorcycle that just makes, it makes cruisers fun. It makes them really fun to ride. Man alive are the cops out, which means I can't really have too much fun. That guy's still got his gun out, so he's not coming after me. I'm gonna get off the highway here. I don't wanna get pulled over. <laughs> this, this thing is just too hurt, rev happy. I know for a fact that I'm just gonna squeeze the throttle a little bit too much, and then we're gonna have a little bit of an issue. But yeah, like I was saying, I was not, I was entirely, when I picked this motorcycle up this morning, I was not expecting to love it as much as I do. And I do think that it still has a lot of flaws, but the Sportster's got a lot of flaws too, you know? It's, they're both very flawed bikes, but this engine is just so good. This, this is the best Cruiser V-Twin out there. And yeah, you can talk about your Evos, you can talk about your 131s, you can talk about your, you know, 113 Power Stroke, Thunderstroke, Mega Twin Cam, Screaming Eagle, but <laughs> this thing is just so little and so humble and it doesn't make a bunch of noise and it doesn't, it speaks softly and carries a big stick. And I think that, I think Indy and the guys who made this engine they should be very proud because they have done something special. They have made something special in the, in this motorcycle. They need to they need to look at the frame and the the setup a little bit because it's a little too small for me and the seat is all wrong and it doesn't feel super great in a corner. But that's all fixable. And I honestly believe that the FTR is going to solve a lot of those problems. I really want to go ride an FTR now after riding this thing around. But my god, they need to pat themselves on the back. Because they knocked the leather off the ball with this one. This is, this is definitely a Sportster killer. 100% it's a Sportster killer. And I say that as a proud Harley boy. I'm not wearing my Harley jacket today, but... I've owned two Harleys, I've gone to bat for our Sportster so many times, but I gotta know when to admit defeat, and my hat, I tip my hat to Indian. This thing is incredible, man. It's absolutely incredible. Now how you doing, partner? This video's over, but you click on this one right over here, you keep watching yourself some yam and new. Maybe I bend my boots on this one, maybe I give you some other funny memes or something like that, but you might not know if you watch the video, so watch the video now, alright?